I'm so sorry now I get in. Hello? Hello? Hello, Lutru. ไอ้ซัวบ่บ่าเก็บซัวลําโบสอกสบายสายก็ตบไว้นะครับเตะเอ่อจุกรองจักมาตั้งเนี่ยมีมีบซัวไอ้ดอมไอ้ดอมบ
and PhD in India for the academic year 2021-2022. We have the honor to have Her Excellency Dr. Devayani Kopra Gade, Ambassador of India to the Kingdom of Cambodia, Excellency Professor uh, Cham Kedati, Minister Delegate, Secretary of State from Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology and Innovation, Excellency Mok Ngoi, Director General, High, Ed High Education Directorate from Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports. And we have Venerable Dr. Ku Sipip, our guest speaker today. So before we start the program today, I would like to introduce our agenda today. So first is a welcome remark by Excellency Ambassador. Second is a remark by Excellency Mok Ngoi, uh, Director General of Higher Education Directorate. Remark by Excellency Professor Cham Kedati, Minister Delegate and Secretary of State. And remark by Venerable Dr. Ku Sipip. Then we come to the, our main program that is will be presented by uh, Sri Sanjay Vedi. He is a, a senior program officer from ISIS New Delhi. And then question answer and last vote of saying by secretary, uh, second, secretary, uh, second secretary, uh, Mr. Haris Narula to, uh, uh, from Indian Embassy to Phnom Penh. So now I would like to invite Her Excellency, Dr. Devyani Kopra Kade to give the welcome speak for this webinar. Can I start, John? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, His Excellency Professor Chem K. Trithi, Minister Delegate, Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology and Innovation, His Excellency Mark Nguyen, uh, Director General Higher Education uh, of, from the Ministry of Higher Education and Youth, Venerable Dr. Kosofiev, Rectors, Friends, Students, Academicians, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my singular honor to welcome all of you today to this webinar organized in conjunction with the Embassy of India of Phnom Penh and the Ministry of Science and Technology and Higher Education Cambodia, as well as the Indian Council for Cultural Relationship, ICCR India, on ICCR scholarships for the academic year 2021-22. As I begin, uh, I want to thank particularly Minister Delegate uh, Excellency Professor Chem Keith Rethi for taking the initiative along with us and supporting us in making this webinar possible today. It was only due to his, uh, his initiative and his network that we were able to reach out to the other ministries. And during this time of the difficult times of the pandemic, as well as the difficult times of lockdown, we still have been able to organize this uh, webinar. And I especially thank all the attendants from attendees from uh, various universities who have taken the their precious time out during this difficult lockdown period to join us in this webinar today. Uh, excellencies, I uh, would not speak much, but uh, assure all of you that India and Cambodia have a very, very strong cultural as well as uh, a relationship uh, that is going to towards the modern times in in our modern times you know ancient and contemporary uh, relevance of india cambodia relationship cannot be overemphasized and this relationship has to be carried forward not just through our culture but through our academic and our economic connections and for this the scholarships of uh, iccr play a very very important role Uh, we have had several scholars uh, in the past 10-15 years who have uh, successfully completed their education in India through ICCR scholarships who have 
made a success of their uh, lives after they have come back to Cambodia or gone abroad uh, to pursue their careers and their, um, and their studies uh, further on. India is a popular destination for higher education uh, from students all over the world, as you're aware, and is home to many top ranking universities in the world, especially in the field of IT and higher uh, fields of science and education. Besides the top universities, we also have many government and private universities and colleges making India an educational hub for the region of Southeast Asia and South Asia. Today, as you're aware, many successful CEOs of the world, whether it is uh, of, the, of, of uh, private sector companies such as Microsoft, Google, Pepsi, are all Indian educated uh, CEOs who have made their mark in the world. Uh, uh, we also have many ICCR uh, students here whose testimonials perhaps we could, we'll be able to hear today to give all of the uh, future prospective uh, students and academicians who wish to pursue their studies and have any doubts that uh, they, may, uh, they may carry in their, uh, in their minds. And so we would uh, encourage all of you to feel free and ask questions today. It is more about hearing from you, hearing from ICCR, and not about uh, the embassy speaking. We are here to just facilitate. And uh, what I would like to assure all of you is that while uh, the COVID pandemic is raging right now, and we have uh, the second wave in India, I must assure you that by the time that your academic year starts, India will be able to control this pandemic and get over the second wave. And ICCR is, and all the universities have been taking specific precautions even during the pandemic to take care of all our students and our uh, scholarship uh, awardees. So please do not hesitate on that account to apply for your scholarships. And as you're aware, uh, we can also defer your scholarships if you wish to and start your academic year a little later if that is uh, an option that you may like to exercise. But uh, rest assured, we will make sure that uh, your stay in, uh, in India during your uh, year, academic years ahead will be without any uh, medical uh, complications and that is uh, something that uh, we are very well aware of and we'll be taking extra precautions on that ground. Uh, well, I will end here. I just wanted to welcome all of you very warmly and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank all of you for joining here today. And as I said, a special thanks also to Dr. Pusofi who has, uh, who has made it um, uh, possible for us to reach out to so many youngsters who follow his uh, social media channels and, uh, and make them aware of the, uh, the opportunities that there are for, for their own lives and for the role that they can play in taking our you know, precious uh, relationship uh, uh, between our two countries forward through their own efforts. So I will end here and I will now invite uh, His Excellency Professor Chem K. Threthi, uh, Minister Delegate, uh, to give his uh, remarks. Thank you. So Markun. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, our agenda is uh, it's uh, Excellency Mokngoi will be speak uh, after uh, Ambassador. So, okay, whatever we uh, Ambassador said. Okay, uh, now I would like to invite Excellency Professor Chem Kedarti, Minister Delegate and Secretary of State, to have a remarks. Uh, thank you. Good morning, uh, Ambassador Deviani. Good morning, distinguished college colleagues. I'm absolutely thrilled to be with you today. And I, I do apologize for not being formal. You see, I didn't adopt a formal dress because I want to address 
this uh, webinar in my capacity as a scholar more than as a minister attached to the prime minister or secretary of state of the ministry of industry science technology and innovation as ambassador devyani uh, stated it is a historical uh, moment uh, for us to meet uh, because the relationship between india and cambodia dated for more than 2000 years the temple of bayon and prakan at angkor archaeological site were actually buddhist monastic university that were built in the 12th century based on the model on nalanda and vikramashila universities so it's nothing new and i like to congratulate uh, ambassador divyani for uh, trying to promote that a uh, uh, long uh, story of a connection between academia of our two countries i myself have been i have been a scholar and a professor for almost 30 years before i quit academia to join the international atomic energy agency and then came back uh, to cambodia uh, seven years ago to lead the a think tank named cambodia development resource institute during my tenure there we have established a very strong research policy research on higher education there is no other cambodian institution that can uh, claim uh, such a data gathering analysis and knowledge about higher education in cambodia and beyond looking at the cooperation with the region in asean and even further to include india i myself i have always been i driven by trying to find opportunity for our young cambodian student uh, to study abroad uh, study abroad is part of my life it's my gene myself i have studied and taught in three different continents i i studied at university of paris i taught in canada in singapore in vienna and as a scholar i have been invited to give lecture at different university for more than 70 countries so academic activity is close to my heart and the challenge uh, for student i understand so well because even today despite my busy schedule i continue to teach undergrad student in cambodia uh, uh, master phd uh, student in japan uh, I'm interacting with many higher education leaders here in Cambodia. Uh, His Excellency Mark Ngoi, I, I meet him uh, hundreds of times over the last seven years. I, many of my junior became president of the university in Cambodia. Dr. Lane Pirum, a former researcher at CDI, is now leading the Kirirum Institute of Technology. I, Dr. Uh, Hien Soti is the founding president of the Cambodia University of Technology and Science to be launched officially at the end of this year. I have been also involved in the process of uh, selecting the best and brightest mind a Cambodian student a graduate from high school to get a scholarship uh, specifically at the Southern University of Science Technology in Shenzhen for at least three years in a row. So all of these are important. And Cambodian students are very, very privileged. I, looking at my own experience, I never get to get any scholarship during my study. The political circumstances uh, didn't open doors for such a thing. Uh, so I have to survive by working doing menial job to pay for my university. But our Cambodian students, especially now, they're very privileged. 
And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank certainly the government of India and other uh, donors, international donors uh, from Japan, Australia, France, USA, China, uh, Thailand, ASEAN country, and name them all. Uh, they have offered scholarship to our students. And from the perspective as a teacher and a former student who roamed the world, um, I am of the opinion that study abroad is fundamental uh, for Cambodian students and all other students, not only an opportunity for them to broaden, to deepen their knowledge, but also the exposure that bring with that stay abroad. Exposure is fundamental for opening up their mind, exposure to different culture that lead to tolerance and also change of behavior. Learning outside the classroom is equally important than learning in the classroom or in the lab. I always told students who consult me for their study abroad, always told them that 50% of your knowledge will come from the university, but learn from the street, go out there, interact with people. So with this, a scholarship from any country and today, especially from India, are absolutely welcome. India is known for advanced technology, right? uh, for also a study of the classics like Sanskrit and history, and there's a broad spectrum, it's a huge country. I've been so many times, I've been to uh, Delhi University, I visited a few other universities in, in Lucknow, in Karnataka province, uh, et cetera. And I'm happy to share with you my secret dream here is that if I were allowed to retire uh, uh, in the near future, when I reach my uh, 70 year old, my dream is to go to India uh, to study at Nalanda International University. I want to study Buddhist philosophy and logic. Uh, I hope that with my canonic uh, age, I will be eligible to a scholarship. <laughs> so with this, I, I think that this is the intro introduction. A Cambodian student, we interview them, we study their behavior. They're all excited at going in the West, you know, very uh, modern westernized culture because the influence of the internet uh, and everything. But they tend to forget that there are great civilizations near home here. Uh, no citizen, no scholars can ignore the great civilizations of India and China. This is the two oldest uh, solid uh, civilization that are here to stay. And India and Cambodia has such a connection that we tend to forget that many of the Cambodian words that we use are borrowed from Sanskrit. Uh, I, they practice of ritual at the royal court has some similarity as a heritage of uh, the interaction between ancient Angkor and ancient India. I, during my PhD in history, I looked at the education at Angkor, high education, advanced education, and the health system. Many, many uh, topics are still relevant. And I will uh, stop here by uh, maybe sharing a word of wisdom that in the time of pandemic, where our life, our health is threatened by the virus, good policy is important. Technology is important. The behavior of the people, such a trying time. Wisdom is about all, even more important. One should remain calm to cope with the pandemic. And you know what I'm doing? I'm going back to my reading of the Mahabharata. Uh, in Cambodia, they call Mahapirat. So many quotes from that, the stories of the fight between the cousin and that famous war. Uh, so many words of wisdom are still relevant and 
we can look for inspiration, for wisdom, to survive this ordeal, survive the virus by looking at the wisdom from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. So with this, a, a short introduction of the scholarship, the value of scholarship, the historical link between India and Cambodia, uh, I believe that Cambodian students and especially the leaders uh, who attend uh, this webinar uh, I should I promote, try to remind our young mind that Cambodia and India has a long story together. Going to India to study is not about just going to learn the latest algorithm from, uh, uh, from those uh, uh, top the computer company, but it's also to look back at some roots, some of our cultural roots, uh, scripture, writing, philosophy, uh, religion, Buddhism, Hindu, etc. So with this, Ambassador Divyani, it's a great honor to be here, distinguished uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, I am happy uh, uh, to be able to share some of my experience in higher education and my link with India through my research. And I wish you all uh, a great and successful webinar and hoping that many students will try to compete and get a scholarship to go study India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency Professor, uh, for giving the fruitful remarks for uh, the program of today. So next, uh, I would like to invite Excellency Mo Ngoi, Director General from High Education Directorate Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport to have a remarks. Thank you, Excellency Mo Ngoi. Excellency Dr. Diviyani, Ambassador of Republic of India to Cambodia, His Excellency Dr. Chamberti, Minister attached to the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State of Industry and Science and Technology and Innovation, in which participant, ladies and gentlemen, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, some, some today I'm very pleased to participate in the uh, webinar on ICCO scholarship jointly organized by the Indian Embassy, Embassy Ministry of Industry, Science, Technology and Innovation and the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport. Um, within the circumstances in the uh, COVID-19, uh, I, I hear some voice that it is annoying. Oh, it's from uh, my side or from uh, who else? Okay. Excellency, do now you I'm you hear, Do you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, Excellency, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and during this uh, pandemic, you know, now I'm, I'm not at home. Or I'm not in my office. I'm in another office. So I'm at the um, Troy Chongwa uh, High School because now I have another job because I'm responsible for the one of the centers uh, to vaccinate uh, to uh, the uh, teachers in uh, Phnom Penh. <clears throat> yeah. And this is my great honor to be uh, part of this uh, webin uh, webinar on uh, ICCO scholarship. And first of all, I would like uh, to take this an opportunity you know, to thank the Indian government and Indian uh, uh, people for supporting uh, Cambodia since 1990s, especially since 1980s, 
since Cambodia um, um, after the Khmer, Khmer Rouge uh, regime. So India has supported Cambodia in the development, especially in the human resource uh, development uh, by providing a scholarship, uh, hundreds of uh, Cambodian uh, students uh, to study in India during, during the uh, 1980s. And now they uh, return back to Cambodia and they have uh, served in um, a different government ministry and even in the private uh, sector as well. So this is a uh, great uh, support from uh, our friends from the Indian uh, people and Indian uh, government. So I would like to take this on behalf of the Cambodian people would like to uh, thank you uh, very much on that. And now I would like uh, to share with you so what uh, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, especially the Dir Directorate General for Higher Education um, has done so far. I think uh, aligned with the government uh, vision, Cambodia 2030 and Cambodia 2050. You know, the ambition of our government is to move Cambodia um, to the high middle income country and high income country uh, by 2030 and 2050 respectively. So within this, um, with, to align with this uh, vision, so how that the higher education subsector can contribute to this vision. And of course, with the visionary uh, direction of our minister, His uh, Excellency Dr. Hong Chun Naron. So we have uh, focus on some uh, area of reform, particularly in higher education. How can higher education subsector to produce the graduates to meet the labor market and the development of Cambodia? This is the first. And the second is to, uh, to produce the research result which is linked to the needs of the industry. So in this, I think there are two for that higher education, high education subsector must be focused on. So one is the enrollment uh, uh, of the young people into the higher education. In order to become the high middle income country, at least we have the um, graduate the enrollment of our graduate, at least the gross enrollment rate is around, is about the 30 percent. But now the gross enrollment rate in higher education, uh, we have just around a 12 percent. So I think this is, we have the two challenges, you know. So one is in, to increase the enrollment rate in higher education, and the second is to maintain the quality uh, of, of the graduate. So I think this is the, the great challenge for, for uh, higher education in Cambodia. So within, by 2030, we uh, target to increase the, in, the gross enrollment rate you know, from 12% to 30%. So it means that the, um, the youth with the group age from uh, 18 to 22, it must be at the university, you know, so within at least a 30 percent. And the second challenge is we have to uh, improve the quality of our graduate. When we are talking about the quality of uh, education, we must talk about the quality of teacher or quality of our um, uh, lecturer. And when we are talking about the uh, quality or the uh, qualified lecturer, we must talk about their qualification, the degree. And so far, 
the um, lecturer at the higher education at the university who hold a PhD, we have around 10%, I think. So the challenge of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sport, so we, we have to set the target, you know, to increase um, the number or the percentage of lecturer who hold a PhD in order to serve the, the country or to serve the, uh, the need uh, of the, um, the country development and the, 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 the economic growth. So I think the scholarship provided by the Indian government, I think is very, very uh, crucial victory for, uh, for Cambodian uh, youth. So I think just not only, um, we need to have this kind of that, these uh, two type of this uh, scholarship. The so one is the urgent need in order to serve the particular need of Cambodia. So we need uh, a, a bachelor degree and master degree who can come back and, and work within uh, the different uh, sector, private sector and uh, the government sector as well. And also for uh, the long-term development, we uh, need the um, scholarship which offer for uh, Cambodian uh, uh, people to study in a PhD. So that when they come back, they can work with the university, you know, and then they can improve the quality of uh, the education and in Cambodia. So I think that I would like uh, to um, discuss more and work more with the um, uh, the Indian embassy embassy to Cambodia. You know, in a very specific. Uh, 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 a plan, you know, how can uh, the, um, the scholarship offered by the Indian government and the needs of Cambodia, how can we match, you know, for the uh, development uh, in uh, Cambodia. So that I would like uh, to, to share this with you. And last but not least, I, would, I don't want to take uh, a long time uh, to um, discuss about this, uh, the challenges uh, because we don't have much time because and last but not least I would like to um, wish the uh, webinar more fruitful and successful and I look forward to meeting Her Excellency Ambassador after the um, a lockdown uh, situation uh, in Phnom Penh, or maybe after this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, in order to discuss our plan uh, together, how uh, can the uh, Indian embassy, embassy to support that the human resource uh, development in Cambodia. So thank you very much and please stay safe from the COVID pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for your fruitful comment. And next, I would like to invite Venerable Dr. Kusufib to give some remarks. Please. Do you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yes, okay. Venerable. Okay. Respected uh, all venerables here, uh, Her Excellency Master, His Excellency Chamberlain, His Excellency, His Excellency Mok Ngoi, uh, Professor Sanjay Vedi from India, and all distinguished uh, who are present here. I'm, I'm privileged to be here. I have only a few words. <laughs> um, and I would like to thank the, the ambassador for coming to the temple one time uh, last month. I think that 
the visit of the ambassador to the temple um, help uh, interact with the younger uh, population in Cambodia? There, there are more than uh, 500k view on Facebook. <laughs> they they interested uh, the visit of the ambassador to the temple. And thank you very much for the coming. I th I'd like to take back a little bit the history uh, of Buddhism in Cambodia. Buddhism was introduced to Southeast Asia by uh, the great King Asoka in uh, um, around 250 BCE before Christ. So Buddhist philosophy become the main uh, practice in Cambodia, especially during the Jeremiah the Seven, the Bayon Temple and Taprum Temple. Example, um, the influence of Buddhist philosophy in uh, the very top level. And Buddhism still at the heart of the people, uh, more than 95% of the people follow the Buddhist teaching and Buddhism uh, is a mental meditation, a mental, mental medicine taught by the Buddha and the Buddha, of course, from India. And I think the connection and the relationship between Cambodia and India is so long, even before the Buddha time, the trade, um, the, the, the diplomacy and all the connection between India and, and Cambodia is, is long. I would like to uh, thank the government of India, the uh, Indian embassy, especially the Ministry of Education for this difficult time to continue to uh, persuade all the students to study. It, it's very, it's very hard for uh, persuade persuade the, the student to study online in this uh, difficult time. I that is all for me. I'd like to give the floor to uh, all the presenter to give their remark, and I would like to thank you again, all the participant. Uh, donor, the government of India, the ministry. And I, I'm very happy to hear from uh, his, his, Excellency, his Excellency Chimus Rati for um, encouraging all the uh, younger students to go to study abroad. I am, I am, I was very happy. I, I was very short <laughs> remark on that. I, I was, um, sent by Panya Sastra, Sastra University, uh, Dr. Sabang Sam is here, to the US for uh, an exchange program in my master uh, at PUC. And I'm very, I was very happy to expose myself to different culture and I learned a lot. And that is the way you, 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 you learn, you gain the knowledge outside I mean the box. I mean it's it's good. I encourage if you sub, I encourage all the younger students, you submit if you fail, that's okay, no problem. Submit again. And if you fail, come back again, you gain the experience. One of my friends who got uh, a scholarship to study in in EU, um, he said he's not smart, but he just submit application for scholarship again and again and again until he succeeded and he got a master from from EU. So it's not about uh, smart, it's about your endurance, it's about persistence, it's about gaining experience and then you go there and you get the knowledge. I, I encourage all people, all, all the students to participate in the program and submit their application to the US Embassy to get the scholarship to study there to get more knowledge. Thank you very much. I, I, I give the floor back uh, to the moderator. <laughs> uh, uh, 
thank you uh venerable yeah 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 okay uh so now we move to the men's program today that uh this is the floor to sri uh, sanjay vedi senior program director from icsr new delhi to give the presentation on icsr scholarship for academic year 2021 2022 Uh, namaskar everyone good morning i uh, i hope that i am audible yeah yeah yes i can hear you okay thank you so i'm deeply honored uh, that uh, i have been invited to join this webinar on behalf of uh, uh, iccr and uh, i uh, thank you uh, the uh, his excellency uh, professor kem kitreti and uh, Mr. Matnoy and uh, uh, other speakers who have, who have given a thoughtful uh, remarks and uh, highlighting the uh, age old relationship between India and Cambodia, which has also been pointed out uh, by uh, Her Excellency Ambassador of India, uh, Mrs. Devyani Kuragade. So I'm very happy that uh, uh, the remarks of uh, Honorable Minister uh, are on the same lines that ICCR is also thinking to enhance uh, our academic cooperation uh, with Cambodia. And uh, uh, Professor Ethi is the most suitable person to lead this, uh, this uh, kind of uh, mission uh, of ICCR. Right. No, no, you are on. No, no, no. Am I audible? Yes, 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 sir, please. Yeah. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, Professor uh, Vethi has uh, mentioned about his dream to after his retirement to come to India and to you know study at Nalanda. Rather, he should teach there uh, our students. Uh, his valuable experience will be very useful for them. So I invite him anytime. He, he wants to come to India, to ICCR, and to share his experience uh, with our students and with our professors, uh, everyone, those who are interested in uh, academic cooperation. And uh, uh, now I will just uh, uh, mention that recently uh, we, we used this uh, pandemic period to, you know, uh, make some reforms in the ICCR scholarship uh, program which is now basically uh, completely online. So we have uh, initiated the uh, A2A portal, which is admission to alumni in now, from 2018, which is now it's in uh, uh, third year, 21-22. So uh, the basic intention is to make this scholarship program student friendly with uh, uh, choice of courses and, uh, you know, uh, uh, easy admission process. Uh, there are many, many things that have been introduced uh, for the help of uh, uh, students. And it includes also uh, like timely dispersal of the scholarship amount, uh, uh, more close uh, coordination between student, university, and uh, the ICCR. So I will just share the uh, small presentation. And I would rather welcome if uh, you have any questions on that. So just allow me to start the presentation. Uh, is, is my screen uh, visible? No, sir, no. Just a moment. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Now I can okay. see, yeah. Yeah, so this is a basically for the guidance of students, this is a scholarship manual uh, that we have brought out for the uh, convenience of students. Okay. 
with that copy. Now he can share. So this is the table of con contents. Basically, uh, just one. now I don't know where I, I can minimize this one. You know, it's an alt tab. Ah. Is it not visible? Oh. Yeah, this is mine. Okay. Okay. Hmm. See, I cannot minimize. No, you can. Uh, Shift tab. Okay, where is it? This one. Yeah, yeah. You copy this. Copy and press. No, 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 send not. to the store. Eh? No, no, no. You do something else. Go to message. Ah, yeah. no. This one. Eh? Yeah. Where right. I should copy? Send to no. desktop. Paste it on your desktop. Here. Yeah. Mm. 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 Okay. I'll take this pendrive. Okay. Okay. So what okay. next? What next? We 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 want. Uh, what I want is when you open this during the launch, you know, when you mm. say after you know uh, presentation what? by this person. No question answer will be. Okay. After question answer, mm. before vote of thanks, you know, you show this slide. Mm. Little guru will be launching mm. worldwide. So go to the third slide, not second slide. Just skip this. Huh, animated videos little bit. Mm -hmm. You go here, click here. Hello. So it, Shall I continue? No. Yeah. Where is the zoom? Yes. Where can I you see? Wait, wait. Hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Please, please, sir. Okay. So, can you see that screen? Yeah, we can see. We can see. Please. So, these are the salient features of ICCR scholarship. So, basically, we we offer courses. You know, we have the history of uh, offering uh, education opportunities to students from other countries. Uh, from ancient times. So we have courses uh, in diverse field uh, in studying in various subjects, including uh, engineering, IT, philosophy, politics, or classics. So, uh, so, and also we provide scholarships to pursue courses in the field of uh, uh, like uh, Indian dance and music, then yoga and uh, uh, languages, Sanskrit, Pali, Buddhism. So these are the uh, one of these salient features and we have students uh, coming from different countries to pursue uh, these courses also. So about uh, every year we have 23 different scholarships under which we provide uh, 3,500 scholarships uh, per annum. And uh, these courses are not only for the undergraduation, but also post-graduation, master's uh, courses, PhD and postdoctoral also. And at a given point of time, we have about 7,000 students studying on ICCR scholarships. Uh, so students have the wide range of options to choose from level of courses and uh, 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 universities, courses uh, like business administration management, uh, then cultural uh, related courses. Then we have, uh, I al already told about uh, this uh, A2A portal, uh, which is basically to ease the process of, you know, admission and uh, scholarship. So. Uh, this year we have introduced uh, uh, the system of uh, uh, students having the option of choosing five five universities and five courses and uh, once they uh, uh, they have to register on the portal which is a unique uh, id based uh, registration so student has to register with the passport number and once he registers then he has to fill up the application form uh, in which he can uh, fill in the personal details and then choice of his uh, courses and institutions. So he has the option of choosing five different universities. So once he applies uh, there online, so we have uh, dispensed with the system that uh, application comes to the Indian embassy and then to ICCR and then, then to the concerned university. So from this year, 
we have uh, uh, changed the process and once the student apply it the application straight away goes to the dashboard of the concerned university where the student has opted the list of universities is uh, along with the courses is available uh, on the a2 portal for the student to make a choice and of course uh, the uh, student can take help from the indian embassy there in selecting the uh, course and uh, uh, university uh, so basically this is just uh, uh, general figures about uh, iccr scholarship program 7000 students uh, at a given point of time uh, 3500 scholarship plus every year uh, 7500 applications we have received out of which we have confirmed uh, more than 3000 admissions then uh, about 2500 students have accepted the scholarships uh, of iccr so far uh, 1029 new students in uh, undergraduate courses and about more than uh, 1000 students for pg courses and uh, 160 for for phd program so there are 100 subjects on offer then uh, more than 200 universities are there uh, we have 18 regional offices to look after our students and uh, there mainly you know there are six cities where we have concentration of foreign students which are you know ahmedabad bangalore chandigarh delhi hyderabad and pune Uh, then uh, this is the uh, different scholarship schemes uh, general scholarship scheme which is uh, uh, available to all uh, students of every country then we have special scheme for bangladesh then commonwealth scholarship scheme which is for the national of commonwealth countries then we have cultural exchange program scheme which is uh, with the specific countries with whom india has the uh, cultural exchange program then iccr scholarship scheme for indian culture so basically that is very important scholarship scheme where student uh, can come and learn uh, various uh, fields of indian dance music theater cuisine etc so there are many students who want to uh, come and uh, study indian dance and uh, we have uh, opportunities for them also so we have silver jubilee scholarship scheme for uh, nepal students then we have very important scholarship scheme ayush scholarship scheme Uh, under which we teach uh, disciplines of uh, traditional indian medical system uh, which are ayurveda yoga yunani siddha and uh, homeopathy so that scheme we are uh, operating uh, in collaboration with the ministry of uh, uh, ayush then we have special scheme for bhutan maldives mongolia then this is important for cambodia mekong ganga cooperation scheme under which we receive students from cambodia laos myanmar thailand uh, vietnam then we have scheme for afghan students then we have a special scholarship for africa african continent this is a uh, this is the general number of uh, the scholarship slots that we have under each scheme so under mekong ganga which is relevant for cambodia we have 50 slots for ug pg and phil and phd courses then we have iccr scholarship scheme where we have 100 slots uh, for nationals of different countries so this is a uh, very important which uh, i have already mentioned this is the admission process flow chart uh, so how the student will apply then it goes to the universities concerned and once they receive the application then universities you know confirm the admission and the intimation is sent to uh, to the student as well as the uh, concerned indian embassy and from there onwards the student is in touch with the embassy and also with iccr and and the concerned university so there you know once the admission is confirmed students accepts the offer and then uh, mission uh, the indian embassy gives the offer letter to the student then student has to intimate the travel details so that uh, uh, the uh, visa process and the uh, 
intimation to the university and uh, to make arrangements for the students uh, to receive the student on his arrival in india so then he uh, reports to the concerned regional office of iccr after arriving in india and to the university and university completes the admission process and iccr starts releasing the stipend to the uh, student so uh, like uh, one of the speakers mentioned that uh, uh, there are many students who studied in india and uh, they are serving in the government sector as well as private sector so this is a uh, a tentative data of students you know that we have uh, alumni data of uh, students who have studied in india from different countries so you can see that we have students from almost all the countries uh, of the world so in 2015 uh, we have introduced uh, the uh, uh, iccr distinguished alumni award so uh, the recipient of the award uh, in 2015 was students from vietnam ethiopia and france then we in 16 uh, the awardees were from myanmar mauritius indonesia kazakhstan and bulgaria in 2017 Uh, the recipients from bangladesh maldives sri lanka thailand uzbekistan and 18 we we gave the award to students from ethiopia vietnam portugal afghanistan and bhutan and in 19 we uh, gave away the award uh, to the students from afghanistan spain and zimbabwe so this is an uh, annual feature to recognize the uh, our alumni Uh, their contribution in uh, bringing uh, india and the and his own country closer so these are the their you know the happy students receiving the awards from iccr this is a list of uh, regional offices with their contact details who are looking after the students uh, of their respective regions so we have total 18 region regional offices in india uh, and headquarters in new delhi these are the guidelines uh, for the students and uh, i would advise that uh, whosoever applies should read it carefully which, which are also available on the a to a portal and the website of iccr so i don't think there is a need to go through this guidelines because it's more of uh, the use of the student and should be gone through by students very carefully these are the some you know happy notes from testimonials of our alumni uh, mentioning about their good experience uh, while they were in india on scholarship so so you can see they have studied in different uh, universities nalanda university is there the student from vietnam then the student is uh, from yemen at banaras hindu university so uh, like uh, honorable minister mentioned that you know 50% education you get in college and 50% through the people so this is a good example of you know uh, the participation of our foreign students in various activities uh in the cultural programs and you know get togethers so we also you know organize uh, the uh, orientation for the foreign students when they first arrive in india uh, to make them acquainted with the indian culture and people of course uh, uh, students from cambodia you know they uh, we have historical uh, uh, cultural connection so they know much more about india but still uh it is important when they arrive and uh, they get used to the in indian culture so for that purpose we organize the orientation program for them so this is some more nice photographs of students participation in the cultural activities so we got lot more photographs but uh, due to limitation of space we have not included 
many photographs. So you can see the happy faces of students. So this is the end of uh, my presentation. So uh, I would now request if uh, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might be having related to scholarship scheme or uh, about ICCR. So uh, before before I uh, ask for the questions, I would also like to tell you that uh, ICCR a vast uh, academic cooperation program under which we also offer uh, fellowships for the research scholars to come to India from three to 12 months to do research in the interest of their uh, topics uh, with an affiliation to a university of their choice. Then we have a programs of uh, establishing chairs of Indian studies uh, abroad uh, to strengthen the you know, uh, faculty of the foreign universities. And uh, I think we have a couple of chairs in Cambodia also. Then we have academic uh, visitors program under which you know uh, academic visitors uh, can come to India, have interaction with their counterparts. It is for a limited period, one to two weeks visit. So that can also be availed by uh, faculty members of uh, Cambodian uh, universities. So these are few few academic uh, cooperation program, and uh, uh, of course you can uh, contact uh, the Indian Embassy for further details on this and uh, uh, you can send your proposal to avail uh, these programs for Cambodian nationals. Uh, thank you. So I would now like to the moderator to ask, uh, proceed for the question and answer session. Thank you. So thank you very much, sir, for giving uh, presentation of ICSA scholarship. Uh, the next session is a question and answer. So now I would like to uh, uh, request any uh, excellency, rector, professor, teacher, and student have any question, please uh, uh, turn off uh, your uh, camera and uh, turn off your mic to ask the question. Uh, hello. Good, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Venerable Sir, Ambassador, His Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mark Gudong. I am from Panyasasta University, and my major is International Relations. And uh, today, uh, this morning, I am very happy to join in this program. And I have two questions to ask you. Uh, recently, I am a senior student, and in this term, uh, and uh, this term, uh, it is uh, my uh, fine. I I will have finished all my course in this term, so that is why I would like to ask that uh, if I am a senior student, can I apply for uh, scholarships to continue my uh, post? Uh, degree, uh, postgraduate, I mean, uh, master degree in, in India or not. And uh, for the second question is that, uh, if can I, uh, could I apply, how can I uh, apply and how, uh, what should I prepare for that? Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this question. Of course, uh, he can apply to continue his PG, uh, uh, but that would depend on the you know, number of applications that we have received. And our first preference uh, is to give chances, chance to the new student. And if there is a vacancy uh, against the number of slots that we have uh, Cambodian students, uh, I would like to share that you know uh, we don't have good response uh, to the scholarship slots offered to the Cambodian nationals. I uh, don't know the reason, but uh, we, we, we are not receiving the expected number of uh, applications. So there is a need to, you know, uh, publicize the, the scholarship schemes of ICCR among the uh, young students so that they can apply. And uh, the admission process for the current year is on. The last date is 30th April, uh, which is likely to be extended slightly. 
So uh, I would encourage the Cambodian students to apply for ICCR scholarship program. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, as my understanding, his question that uh, now maybe he's doing like a, a bachelor degree in year four, and he's going to uh, graduate uh, uh, the bachelor degree soon. Uh, he want to to know can he apply and what type of document it will be required by the ICSR to uh, apply for the scholarship. This is his question. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned that uh, any students who has to apply afresh, so he he has to register on the A2 portal. So he should apply through A2 a portal. So first section is the registration. Second uh, session is the uh, filling of the information and third session is the uploading of the documents. So has to, he has to upload the uh, documents uh, for his previous qualifications. Uh, for example, if he's applying for master's degree, then he has to upload his uh, degree for the bachelor's degree. Uh, and um, um, after uploading the uh, documents, his application will be on the dashboard of the university for uh, its consideration. So it means uh, he need to complete his uh, his bachelor degree to get the complete the certificate from uh, university. Then he can apply. Yes, he can apply. Uh, he can also apply on the basis of uh, his uh, final year mark sheet, because uh, issuance of degree take a little bit more time. So on the basis of his provisional certificate issued by the university immediately after declaration of the result. So. Uh, he can upload that uh, provisional certificate along with his mark sheets uh, for uh, for his for his application to be considered by the university for the master's degree. Yes, uh, yeah, I think uh, venerable, you you understand uh, the answer. Uh, yes, uh, brother, I just got some. I mean, it is uh, still not clear. Jeff. I mean, uh, can I? I mean, uh, do I? So I mean, uh, do I need uh, to graduate first at a certificate of a bachelor degree from my university, and then I can apply for that scholarship, right? Yes, yes, you are rightly understood. So, uh, actually, as my experience. Uh, uh, last uh, three years, then uh, some student who uh, suppose uh, the the result announced uh, on you know in in July suppose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then he uh, the the student who graduates in uh, March oh no in uh, uh, in April or May mm -hmm. so then he can submit the, all the max it to like a first year foundation year. Uh, second year, third year, and to some like last semester, they can submit. And and one university is Andhra University. He uh, they accept the student. This is uh, my experience that uh, mm -hmm. last uh, last year that uh, one student who who just submit like that, then he got the admission. Yes, that's what I'm telling you that you have to upload all the mark sheets. Uh, for all the three years and uh, the provisional certificate e issued by the university after announcement of the result. So that is sufficient uh, for applying uh, for the master's degree. So it means when, okay. uh, when a ball he can apply because he is going yes. to graduate uh, soon. Yes. yes okay, yes. I okay, understand. Okay, next okay. question, please. Thank you, sir, and thank you, brother. Good, mom, good morning, Ambassador. Good morning, His Excellency. Good morning, Professor, and good morning, uh, lady and gentlemen. Uh, I am Sengha. I'm studying at the Royal University of Phnom Penh, and I will uh, graduate soon. And I have one question to ask. Uh, due to the coronavirus situation, my university temporarily suspends the right contact and stay in touch online. And now uh, my capital city is being uh, locked down, which is why I could not request the 
uh, request the withdrawn um, transcript. Uh, so can I still apply for a scholarship with, uh, without transcript, or can I request uh, I apply with uh, my uh, first year transcript? Thank you. Yes, sir, please. Uh, do you understand the question? Yeah, yeah, I understood. So basically why we need the transcript is to understand the uh, level of the student. So in case we don't have the transcript, uh, so university will not be able to assess the qualification of the student. So in that case, transcript of the uh, mark sheet is absolutely necessary for university to consider. And I also would like to highlight that uh, ICCR is facilitating the scholarship uh, and the admission. However, the eligibility criteria uh, is the prerogative of the concerned university in which the student applies. Uh, so we, we can't uh, uh, ask the university to deviate from any precondition. Of course, we can flag the issue, the problem and all that. But uh, the final selection and uh, uh, confirming confirmation of the admission would be the sole prerogative of the university. So transcript is necessary uh, uh, for for seeking admission in any university. Thank you. Okay, sir, I understand. So uh, yes, uh, I, I forgot his name. So you need to get uh, at least uh, three years transcript of your max sheet, then you can apply for that. Uh, without transcript, you cannot because the uh, university will uh, evaluate your uh, your study record. Otherwise, uh, the university cannot consider your admission because uh, ICR, as uh, Sir mentioned, is ICR no role to push university to accept or not. So uh, this is the uh, it depend on the uh, 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 university policy and university requirement. Yes. Yes, thank you for explaining to the student. Okay, the next question, please. Thank you so much, sir, Sanjay Vidi. And uh, I'm Hok Ching Ki. I'm from University of Hengsenbrand Kibong Kmum. And I was a student from Nalanda University also. And actually, I have three questions, but the first question you have done, it's already. So the second question is that, like, uh, Mr. Vani mentioned Cambodia facing the problem. It's not only Cambodia, but the world is facing with the coronavirus. And my second question is that, uh, does the applicant uh, submit the application form without a passport? Because Uh, there was break in voice, so there was break in voice. I could not hear your question. Can you please repeat? Sir, as my understand, his question is uh, if uh, uh, the, any student who apply for the scholarship without passport, because here, as uh, you know, uh, uh, most of the students coming from the rural area, they, you know, uh, uh, if they don't uh, get the scholarship, uh, they will not apply for the uh, passports. So mm -hmm. if uh, it, it, this, uh, uh, they, the ICSR will consider to, uh, his application or her application without pass, uh, you know, submit a passport. Uh, as I mentioned that, you know, a, a registration on the A2 A portal is through the unique ID, which is passport. So if a person is not having the passport, he cannot even register on the A2A portal. So that is one of the mandatory requirements for the students to uh, have the passport before applying for the scholarship. Sir, so actually, as I was practice for the last uh, few years, uh, mm -hmm. some of the students, they don't have passport, but they still can apply. They can, they, they still, you know, can register uh, their application. Why? Because they will give the you know uh, uh, number of passport, but in the slot that is uh, required for submitting the passport copy, he mentioned you know uh, like uh, and, uh, my passport is under process at the Ministry of uh, Interior Kingdom Cambodia. Then he mm -hmm. saved as a PDF and he upload. 
then mm-hmm. uh, uh, the uh, university also uh, you know uh, provisional uh, give the provisional admission for them after mm-hmm. after he uh, confirm from the, uh, the you know get the confirmation from ICCR and from uh, indian uh, mission uh, mm-hmm. then they uh, they proceed for you know apply for uh, their passport this is uh, as we practice in the last few year mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so I got your point. So uh, let me discuss it with our technical team and uh, find out and I will reply it to you through email and then in turn you can inform the student. Okay, sir. So one more thing that is uh, Mr. Uh, Oi Woti, he is uh, asked uh, his question. What is the requirement in order to apply for the doctoral scholarship? Does it require English test uh, score or not? English test is basically uh, required for uh, each level of the course and it is uh, uh, basically also uh, we have to see that uh, from where if he has done you know uh, his previous qualification from some English speaking country so it can be exempted but that will be the discretion of the uh, concerned Indian embassy if if the mission is satisfied that he has uh, sufficient knowledge of uh, english to uh, uh, to pursue the course he has applied for but mm-hmm. it is uh, as a practice as a standard the english language test is compulsory uh, for each applicant so as this year uh, the requirement have been revised by iccr because uh, uh, Embassy, embassy no role to conduct any English test for, for English proficiency and they will write the like uh, essay 500 word essay and submit along yeah, yeah, yeah. the application yeah, right. yes yeah. and and also uh, they mention uh, if uh, any applicant who have the you know IELTS uh, score or the TOEFL score they also can submit so it yes, means yes. like IL or yeah, so it is very, is very recent, yeah, very recent change yes. uh, in the new change. So I just skipped it. So uh, yeah, that is there. So he can upload the uh, TOEFL score and uh, the uh, small essay. Uh, this write-up is to be written. So this is according to the uh, new guideline. So uh, English test is not conducted by the mission, but he has to give an evidence of his English proficiency in the application form itself. Okay, so I understand. So uh, I would like to, I need some question from the uh, student or participant and you can ask, uh, you know, turn off your, uh, turn on your mice and even uh, webcam, you can ask the question, please. Yeah. Okay, so my name is Ut Kunti. So I was a, a ICC scholar alumni also in 2016 to 2018. And I was studying in Savitri Baifule Pune University in Maharashtra State. Uh, so I have uh, uh, two questions that related to the ICC uh, scholarship. Uh, so my question is that now I'm applying for the PhD to uh, Delhi University and JNU. Uh, related to uh, the PhD program. But among our uh, Indian education, I has no MPhil. So if I would like to apply for the PhD, so those university require, require me to uh, study one year with the MPhil or not? So this is my fir- first question. And next question, I would like to request you that so it is possible for uh, our ICS uh, scholar, you should postpone with your uh, ICS uh, deadline because if we just look at announcement from uh, Indian University in Cambodia, uh, the deadline for uh, the ICS uh, scholarship will be uh, finished in the end of this month. So if it is possible for you, could you postpone uh, the deadline for our Cambodian scholar. And one more thing I would like to request you that when those Cambodian reach in your country, so uh, 
uh, could you please facilitate for all document like C form or like any document related to the Cambodian scholars stay in India? So this is my uh, request. So thank you very much for your sharing your experience. Thank you, Excellency, Ambassador, and Vulnerable. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, so as a response to your first question that you have applied for PhD and uh, you need to do MPhil or not. So basically MPhil and PhD are integrated courses. So as per the Indian education system, uh, especially this PhD program in University of Delhi and GNU. So you are required to first uh, complete the MPhil and then you will automatically uh, admitted to the PhD course. So you will be applying for MPhil and PhD course together. So MPhil is necessary to pursue the PhD course. Your second question is uh, uh, the deadline. So uh, because of the uh, this pandemic, the admission process has already been delayed. The last date presently is 30th April, and it is most likely to be uh, uh, again extended uh, not only for Cambodia, but uh, all the countries. So it is likely to be the uh, second week of May, up to second week of May. Uh, so, but we have to uh, see also the convenience of the universities while you know fixing a date. So this is being extended in consultations uh, in consultation with the university, Indian universities. Uh, so there will be notification on the A2 portal and website of ICCR. Please look for that. And the, your, as regards to your third question, so once the student arrives in India, so ICCR's regional office in coordination with the university uh, helps the student in completing the, uh, not only the admission formalities, but also the uh, other formalities uh, relating to getting the hostel registration, registration with the uh, foreigners regional registration uh, office, uh, the, you know, which each and every foreigner is required to register. So all opening a bank account to receive the stipend. So there are many other things uh, with which ICCR extend its support uh, to the student. And uh, the concerned institution is also involved in this process. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I now I will take this opportunity to uh, to give the chance to uh, Mr. Kong Bun Ho. He rest his hand. So Mr. Kong Bun Ho, please. Okay, yes. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, respect to Venerable Good Spirit, right? And uh, uh, to um, Excellency and ladies and gentlemen, and especially Mr. Uh, Sanjay, okay. Um, here, I'm from the National Assembly Committee of Cambodia. And then um, my question is uh, that uh, uh, I would like to know about the aid requirement the aid requirement uh, for master and doctor degree. Okay. And uh, as you know that some of the civil servants, their, uh, their aid um, may be uh, beyond the requirement. And then, um, so in this case, uh, would the uh, Indian party um, provides or offer the uh, opportunity, okay, or the assumption for uh, the civil servant to pursue the master or doctor degree. Okay, that's my questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for your question. So as I mentioned uh, in reply to an earlier question, so eligibility criteria is the discretion of the concerned institution. So which, which is different from university to university. So you have to find out that uh, which university allows the students beyond the uh, age that you have. So there are many universities who, who does not prescribe age limit uh, for the PhD courses or master's courses. So, uh, but ICCR cannot uh, help in, you know, asking university to, uh, to, to make any amendments in the eligible, eligibility criteria uh, that they have prescribed for a particular course. Because they are independent institution and it is their policy decision under their respective uh, you know, ministries or 
authorities uh, with whose consultation they fix the first, uh, criteria for admission uh, both for indian students and foreign students for admission in a particular course thank you okay sir thank you so next question it's uh, mr phan kamsai yes you can ask thank you very much for speaker that you are very great and sharing your experience uh, i'm phan kamsai and i'm a teacher i would like to ask a question mm. uh, because of looking down in phnom pen i cannot travel uh, anywhere Uh, so I don't have enough document for apply like physical fitness. Can I own any uh, document for apply, especially a uh, uh, physical fitness? That that's all your question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, please. Yeah, close. Yeah, physical fitness is one of the important documents uh, for you know. being considering being considered for the scholarship because we have had the cases you know where uh, the students have come to india with the severe illness so it is basically to see that student is fit and he has no major illness so without it it is not possible to get admission or scholarship uh, from iccr so this can be facilitated maybe the cambodian side can facilitate uh, designate some hospitals or some doctors to give the uh, physical fitness certificate for the students who are applying for iccr scholarship but uh, it is not possible to uh, relax any condition for a particular country and which is one of the essential documents for getting admission and getting scholarship thank you Oh, okay, so I, uh, in this case, because uh, Cambodia now is full lockdown and the hospital not accommodate, uh, you know, any student, any uh, patient is not necessary. They will not allow to get any test. Um, uh, is it possible that uh, he can apply and he can submit later on when the lockdown is uh, released? I think it's it it yeah. Uh, I will I will just explore this possibility, but in any case, uh, uh, before uh, awarding him the scholarship, the fitness would be necessary. But I can confirm it later on uh, on this uh, whether it is possible or not. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. As a, for example, like uh, once a PhD scholar, he he apply but without uh, submitting the uh, fitness certificate but uh, because that time he they could not apply uh, used to deadline uh, but he give to uh, submit to embassy later on then i just keep hold at the embassy whenever the university need or i see a need then we can forward that uh, you know by mail or whatever uh, then now his admission being confirmed by the university that is a uh, university of jammu Uh, uh this is the, the the case we we you know we have experience so uh, uh yes yes sir, you can uh, you know uh, give us some idea regarding this okay i have noted this point and uh, i will get back to you on this and then you can respond to the student accordingly okay so uh i think the next question uh yes sir. because i didn't uh, see anybody raise uh, their hand so yeah yeah i can see mr chun i'm not i'm not is asking okay. raising his hand yeah i think mau mau visna he asked about if he applied for iit or nit for undergraduate degree of engineering do i need to take intern exam Uh, uh nit and iit yes and iit and nit sir so the, uh, the... Uh, uh, iit doesn't exempt anybody but nit delhi uh, nit i think uh, they they have exempted uh, exempted the foreign students who are applying through iccr for the entrance test so uh, but if you can just you know because it's a very very technical question so let me be sure because uh, i i'm not handling the uh, 
this uh, scholarship department directly so i i need to need a clarification before you know confirming it but as far as i understand uh, nit delhi provides admission without entrance test okay so uh, yes uh okay next question please may may yes uh, yes 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 please yes uh namaskaram to venerables namaste to embassy ambassador and namaskar to uh, our professor and namaskar to venerable and student in this webinar uh my name is jonam not i'm from prasa honoraj british university so i has one question to uh to know about the uh, scholarship of the iccr my question is um uh, i has got i has uh, gotten a scholarship uh, from iccr Asked uh, one year ago uh, uh, to study at Entra University, uh, Visakhapatnam, India. So I need to uh, prepare my document again to uh, to complete uh, my uh, my apply to study in India or or not. Uh, this is my uh, question to uh, to uh, to rest thank you okay uh, I, uh, yeah uh, can you just repeat your question i could not get it as uh, uh, my question is uh, i i has gotten a, a scholarship to study uh, in entra university in india so i this time i uh, i should uh, prepare document again to uh, complete my apply or not for this year but the last year i has got it already of uh, my scholarship yeah i think uh, it is the same question that they were they, that was asked by uh, one uh, some other student in the beginning that uh, he has completed certain course uh, on iccr scholarship and wish to apply uh, again uh, to continue further studies so i would advise to apply and it depends on the number of students number of applications that iccr has received and uh, uh, whether there is a vacancy for the repeat students so i would advise you to apply and then wait for the chance that you get the scholarship or not I hope you got my answer. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, I think next question, please. Thank you. Okay, sir. so, so uh, I have one. Uh, the last question: Does ICCR committee consider any? Uh, educational background for phd what what it's mean educational background for phd for example i have completed my ma in uh, philosophy but uh, i want to apply for phd in other field it's not related to uh, philosophy Okay. Okay. So got your point. So uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, as far as I understand, that he wants to do uh, uh, the PhD in some other field which he was not pursuing in his masters. Am I right? Is you are right, sir. Yeah, you are right. But uh, yeah, again, my... yeah, again, I would. i would like to explain that this the 
eligibility criteria is decided by the uh, concerned university so they have to decide whether you are uh, you can go for phd despite you have not pursued that subject uh, in your masters so it depends on the synopsis that you submit and uh, it depends on the you know that uh, concerned department of the university whether in such circumstances that they would like to have and they have to see the evidence that you can do phd in this subject but iccr cannot uh, uh, do anything in this so it depends on the concerned institution whether you whether to take you there or not oh, uh, it, it, it's clear uh, so now i yeah it's uh, mr von sokhain yes please um, hello, the ambassadors of Cambodia, and hello, all professors. My name is Once again. I have a question. Um, I just wonder for the um health insurance. Um, after we got a scholarship, so the health insurance we should prepare by ourselves, or the program will provide us. Thank you. So, did you got the question? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. I also did did got it. So, uh, can you repeat again? Um, so I just wonder about the health insurance. Um, after we got the scholarship, for example, so the program or the scholarship will provide us the health insurance, or we should be uh, prepare it by ourselves. Okay, got it, sir. So please. Thank you. Yeah, can you please tell me the question if you have understood? Sir, so actually, he's just uh, his question is about health incident because the previous year we not include the health incident, but this year I see are why the guideline regarding the health incident is should be uh, should be borne by the uh, student you know who are uh, available for scholarship. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think yes, sir can. Explain. Yeah, the uh, basically you know the uh, this uh, change in the uh, change in the rule for this. Uh, medical uh, facility to the students so it was done for the convenience of the students because we found that you know students have been going to different hospitals and their claims were not being admitted due to you know uh, various norms of uh, reimbursement so after uh, uh, due deliberations uh, on the subject even some discussions were held with the students also uh, and our finance department also. So we thought that it would be more wise to uh, uh, more wise to student have his own health insurance. So we have identified some good insurance company they, who are charging a very minimum amount on the health insurance and they have a, a, a kind of a network of hospitals where student can go for any kind of treatment uh, and in uh, it is uh, basically cashless, uh, cashless uh, treatment of the student. So it, it has been found very useful by the students also, because it's not uh, uh, a very big amount that student has to pay, which is around you know uh, three thousand rupees per uh, three thousand to five thousand um, uh, rupees per annum uh, for a student. And uh, while we were having the other system of reimbursing the amount so students uh, were getting huge cuts in the claims that they have they were being uh, submitted so sometimes you know hospitals are uh, charging uh, higher from them so it was ultimately a loss to the student of getting reimbursement from iccr so that is that would be more beneficial system for the students to bear the one time annual expense on the medical insurance and get uh, get his medical treatment whenever he needs it thank you yes in 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 this regard regarding the health insurance uh, i can share some uh, idea uh, this insurance it will be very useful for the uh, student who uh, 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 got the scholarship because uh, the fee we pay every year it's uh, like it seem like around 50 dollar or 55 something like that but in case you admit it at in the hospital, you will get like uh, uh, two lakh, right? Sir? Two lakh is around uh, uh, one thousand six hundred eighties uh, USD, something like that. So, so I think it's not a huge amount. You can pay this is per year. 
So uh, as a revised by uh, the, uh, the revised norm by ICSR, this is uh, should be borne by the uh, applicant and scholar for the health insurance. Okay. So uh, yeah, I think it's next question, please. Yeah, Vani. Yes. Uh... Good afternoon, sir and madam. I, I, I don't have a question, but I have a request. But first, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fanny. I, I graduated from uh, India too, I, uh, IIT Jodhpur. So uh, currently, I just got position in uh, ITC, uh, a, mathem a mathematics lecturer there. And this time, I am passionate about pursuing my PhD at IIT uh, Mumbai or Madras. But uh, due to some problem in, in Cambodia, like a uh, lockdown, so I could not proceed my document, like uh, medical fitness. And so, so I'm requesting you uh, to be kind enough to extend the, the line of the uh, scholarship up to mid of May, so, so that I could prospect the, the medical fitness. And also one more thing, I am trying to send two of my students to study mathematics master and bachelor in India. But they also faced the same problem. They could not proceed the document due to the lockdown and their unity is closed. Everything is closed here in Phnom Penh, so we could not proceed it. Again, I am requesting you to be kind enough to extend the scholarship deadline so we all can proceed the document and apply for ISDR scholarship. That's it. Uh, yeah. Uh... As I said earlier also, that uh, ICCR in consultation with the academic institution is uh, working on the possibility of extending the deadline for the application, which is 30th as well. And it is most likely that it will be extended up to 15th May. So uh, you will get the announcement soon through our Indian embassy in Phnom Penh about it. And Thank you. you can also see it on the A2 portal and website of ICCR. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, sir, for your uh, sharing. Uh, related to my uh, next question, uh, as I asked you, uh, the first question related to, to MPhil. Actually, uh, I just graduated from MA Education, but I would like to apply for the PhD in Education again. So I'm not sure that, so in those schools, require me to study MPhil again or not? Because uh, as I heard from my Indian friend, they just told me that if I want to apply for the PhD in education, so I have to study in MPhil uh, at least one year, and then I can apply for the uh, PhD in education. Because now for a day, I have no uh, uh, MPhil yet. But actually, I would like to apply for the PhD in education. So this is require me to study MPhil again or not? Because this is the opposite causes that related to uh, my master and my uh, uh, PhD. So thank you, sir. Thank you for your, the, it's a similar question. So as per the standard uh, guidelines, one has to study and fill uh, before doing the PhD. But again, I will highlight that, uh, that the eligibility criteria is decided by the concerned academic institution. So what I suggest before applying, you can just get in contact with the concerned university, send an email to them, send your documents to them that uh, you have this uh, qualification in education, you want to do PhD in education and do you need to pursue ANFIL also or not. So uh, before, you know, formally submitting the application, you can call them on WhatsApp or, you know, even you can call the concerned regional office of ICCR to find it, uh, find it out for you. So if you tell the name of the university and they can give you the uh, contact number of the concerned uh, international students advisor. Because uh, finally, it has to be decided by the university. Okay, so, thank you, sir. Yeah. Related to this. Okay, I yeah. are, uh, last time I just uh, contact through the email or WhatsApp, but uh, they didn't reply to me very soon. So that's why I think that is, uh, I feel, uh, Hesitate to yeah. uh, contact yeah, them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah please this. write to the university with a copy to the ICCR 
concerned regional okay. office and we have a dedicated program director uh, for the admissions uh, i can uh, i can share the contact details through our embassy uh, with you so you can address your question to uh, to the to that concerned officer in iccr delhi okay so thank you sir and one more question that related to your website for login to apply for the scholarship so uh, sometimes your website has error uh, because sometimes i cannot uh, log into your website so it is possible can you uh, facilitate for the website for applying the scholarship yeah we are we are working on this you know we have noticed that there there had been you know uh, technical glitch and uh, sometimes our portal doesn't work so we are working on that and uh, of course these such things you know are uh, you know technology based and you are tend to this, uh, face such problems so we are trying to upgrade it to, um, uh, higher so that you know we, because the uh, this load on the website is also you know increasing day by day so we are working on the solution uh, with our technical team and i hope that uh, uh, now this will work better And the last question, but not least, uh, related to uh, the document. I already submitted my any document to your uh, website already, but some document I just upload as a temporary, like uh, you see, like fitness certificate. Because so now in Cambodia we are uh, we lock down related to uh, our because of the coronavirus. So that's why in Phnom Penh city is locked down. So we cannot go outside. So some document I just upload it. According to my uh, old fitness for the master, so that's why I just upload as a temporary. But when the government of Cambodia they just uh, open for the lockdown again, so uh, I can go to the hospital for checking my uh, fitness. So it is possible. Can you uh, facilitate for all the applicants related to uh, some document? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as I uh, already told in reply to a previous question about the physical fitness certificate, so I will consult it with the, our technical team and the, the concerned authorities in ICCR uh, to, for the time being, uh, to exempt the physical fitness certificate due to lockdown conditions everywhere. So if that can be provided by the student when he actually gets his scholarship and joins uh, Indian institution. So thank you, sir, for your sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, any question? So I, uh, you know, it time is, uh, you know, if you have any question, then uh, we actually we have another another program. We 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 support to launch the little guru app. It is Sanskrit app. So we will display, you know. Uh, at, uh, at one and a half uh, uh, minutes or three uh, two minutes uh, video. So if there is no question, then we go ahead with the launching of Sanskrit app. So yes, uh, the last two questions, if any uh, student, uh, any teacher uh, want to ask, please. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, please, despite Excellency, Ambassador, and Excellency Professor, ladies and gentlemen, please on join the meeting. Uh, so, uh, I have uh, two questions to Professor. Uh, one, did your uh, university have a uh, short, short course? Uh, training for ICT and a second uh, so uh, your university have a uh, soft skill study online during the COVID the COVID business for uh, the fail of ICT thank you yeah so do you understand i think uh, his question is related to indian technical and economic program a cooperation program yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is not related to icsr so uh, in this regard yeah. 
in this regard, Ministry of External Affairs, we you know, conduct every month for the uh, EI Tech, we can say online training course. Uh, the, this, in this concern, is not related to ICCR. Um, yes, uh, actually, if you want to uh, see the uh, I, EI Tech's upcoming program, you can go to uh, iTech uh, uh, portal. Mm -hmm then you will see the program is available on there. So Thank I you. think it's, uh, it's not relevant to ICSR. Uh, I, I would suggest if you can put a link, uh, 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 if you could kindly share the link of I the program on, on your website. E, e, oh, that's it. That's yeah, it. I, will, I will share in the, in the chat. Yeah, if it is there, so at least they can, because this is also part of the academic cooperation. Okay. Uh, Okay. of the government of India. Of course, it's not being done by ICCR, but it is equally important for them to you know, okay. explore this program also. So the link is there like, along with ICCR. Yeah, I already dropped the link, sir. Yeah, so yeah. the last Thank question. You. Yeah, please. I think it's uh, maybe no question. Okay, now we can move ahead. Yeah, I would like to suggest one more thing. Okay, please, sir. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned about the reforms in our scholarship program. So uh, recently we had a uh, online conference with the Indian Academic Institution. The link was shared with the, uh, our missions abroad. So that is available on uh, ICCR's YouTube channel, Facebook. So if you can, you know, uh, advise the uh, concerned authorities, uh, related to you know academic cooperation if they can just see uh, this uh, conference online the recording is available so they can understand what india is uh, thinking about you know um, making india preferred hub for education for the foreign students so uh, it gives useful insights uh, into the academic uh, plans of uh, government of india and iccr scholarship scheme so i would like uh, you to if you can could share the link uh, with the concerned academic authorities in Cambodia. Thank you. Oh, okay, so we will do it. So now the next program, uh, we will launch a little Guru app. There is a Sanskrit app. And Ambassador will explain uh, a little bit about the, uh, uh, this app.
Sir. Okay, sir, just, uh, just uh, hold on. Uh, we have some technical problem. So we will display soon. Sir. Okay, sir, just, uh, just uh, hold on. Uh, we have some technical problem. So we will display soon. Okay, now we are about to launch the uh, in Little Guru app, so which is the world's first gamified Sanskrit learning app. So uh, regarding that, I want to show a little presentation. Uh, so how this helpful in learning in Sanskrit in a fun way. Uh, So this is how the it will be games like one uh, guess the word or uh, it it will be like gaming and one can learn easily. So this is how you know you can see in the drag and drop you have to drag and drop the words and it will say whether it is correct or not. And once it is right, you can analyze your performance and in, in analytics tab, you can analyze the games and you can uh, see the progress of your improvement. So it, it, the app is in English and also in other Indian languages and three is French, Spanish, German, Thai, and Korean. Uh, so Ambassador uh, will tell a few words about the app. Ambassador, ma'am, please. <laughs> Uh, Shrikant, we can't see the video, nor can we see the uh, presentation. So at least what we could now tell our uh, colleagues is that uh, those who are there, friends, uh, uh, professors, rectors, that this app is available on both Apple as well as on Android uh, Play Stores, and it can be downloaded for a fee, but it is a very minor fee, and that also we can... Uh, up, we as the embassy we can offer uh, to various institutions and students who want to learn Sanskrit in Cambodia especially because uh, uh, on uh, on a um, cost uh, costless basis on we can up, we can uh, uh, offer it uh, for free but you'll have to write to us and uh, you can look at the emails that you have to apply, uh, you know, you'll have to write at on the embassy website as well as on our Twitter handles and Facebook. We will put it out today, all the information regarding this app. Unfortunately, the app is, uh, you know, the presentation is not working today, so we cannot run you through the, uh, through the app, but it's very interesting for Cambodia, especially because we, uh, the Cambodian language has a number of Sanskrit words. And if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken, more than 2,000 words are from Sanskrit. 
and therefore we would uh, we think that this would be very very important and useful for sanskrit scholars buddhist scholars and even uh, generally uh, for linguists and language enthusiasts who want to see the uh, origin and the uh, structure of the khmer language and to see the similarities between uh, the cambodian uh, khmer and uh, sanskrit uh, language uh, from india so we feel that this is a very very uh, important uh, tool for bringing our people together and we encourage all students to use this app uh, also for universities we can definitely provide it uh, for free if you write it to us we can uh, we can arrange that even students if you give us a reason that this is something that you are uh, you know it's it will be helpful for you in your studies and so on we'll definitely consider it and uh, um, provide it free of cost so please feel free to uh, look at it uh, go to the play stores and uh, look at little guru app uh, it's available and uh, you know we we will put out a not notice today giving all the details and we'll try one more time to run you through the video or uh, through the uh, through the app but if that doesn't happen then i would like to also take this opportunity to extend a vote of thanks to all our uh, esteemed uh, attendees today starting from uh, excellency uh, professor chemket swekti and uh, minister delegate uh, from the ministry of uh, attached to the prime minister and secretary of state of the uh, ministry of uh, science and technology his excellency mark new uh, director general uh, higher education from the ministry of youth and education venerable dr ku sofi and all rectors and friends who uh, uh, student friends who have joined and so enthusiastic enthusiastically participated with all the questions and comments but these are really valuable we value you immediate immensely and we look forward to all of you applying and uh, also qualifying for for the uh, for the uh, uh, scholarships and last but not least i want to thank uh, mr sanjay vedi from iccr for a very excellent for an excellent presentation and for very uh, crisp question and answer session with the students uh, with this i would like to encourage all of you to please apply 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 even if you do not have the medical certificate please put an old certificate and write to the embassy write to iccr that i will produce this certificate later and we will take it up with iccr and with the universities themselves to to ensure that your application is considered even if you have don't have your uh, graduation certificate please apply with your mark sheets and write to us at the embassy we will make sure that we speak to the universities and iccr and and uh, uh, ensure that your application is considered on a provision on these provisional mark sheet basis also uh, uh, i think a couple of others had doubts about uh, whether they can apply for a different discipline if they have studied philosophy they want to study something else please apply i'm sure there are many universities who are looking at your applications not based on your graduation in a particular discipline but based on your synopsis and the uh, and the statement of purpose so do not hesitate i would just say apply and let us know please keep writing to the embassy uh, any uh, in your application if there are any doubts please write to the embassy and we will try and address those doubts but do not hesitate from applying we think that all you students who are going to go to india are an, a very organic link between our two countries and just as it's not just that uh, it, you know we, uh, we 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 look at it from a larger perspective from the perspective of india cambodia relations and of course we look at uh, you know human resource development uh, your uh, development of your careers and your human resource talents uh, which can play a great role in the development of cambodia and therefore i feel uh, you know look at subjects which are 
not just related to uh, Buddhism and dance and uh, Ayush, of course, these also are, uh, you know, they, they are our cultural heritage and uh, they also provide very great career opportunities back at home in Cambodia. For example, uh, you know, dances, uh, there are so many similarities between our dances that there is a, a great opportunity for, uh, for you to pursue a career when you come back to Cambodia or even in India for that matter, uh, because of the similarities. Similarly, between our traditional medicines, there are so many similarities that you can come back and pursue a career here or pursue a career in India. And uh, that goes with cuisine, but also look at various universities, which are, uh, which are uh, you know, um, offering courses in IT, in science, mathematics, and advanced studies, because India is also very, very, uh, well known for education in these fields. So do take this opportunity and uh, please write to us and don't hesitate. We will follow up your scholarships and make sure that any small uh, problems that you have, uh, we will find solutions for those. So thank you so much uh, once again uh, and all of you, one and all for joining today uh, in, this, um, in this webinar. Let us hope that all of your uh, applications are considered and uh, we, we have 100% utilization of the scholarships available this year. So with that, I thank all of you once again, and we will try one more time to play the video of Little Guru. If it is not playing, please come to our website, please come to our social handles, and you will find the information of the launch of this Sanskrit app which we are very proud of. And I think it's a very, very uh, beautiful connection between India and Cambodia for everybody to explore. And please remember the offer that we'll also uh, provide you uh, cost uh, uh, free uh, app uh, subscriptions uh, if you give us a reason, if you give us a good reason, and if you're, a, uh, if you're an institution. Thank you so much once again. So Martha. Thanks too. Okay, thank you, sir, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. So now we come to the end. So I would like to say goodbye, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.